Hello, this is Brad Wild, and today we're going to take a closer look at programming the FMC and the Zebo 737. As you might know, Zebo has developed a wrapper for the Laminar Research Default 737 that comes with X-Plane, and uh, it just adds a whole lot of immersion, and with that comes complexity. So I thought today we would take a closer look at the FMC and try to understand a little bit more about setting it up for a flight. As you can see, I've already powered up the airplane just so we can get right to the FMC. But we have to have a route in mind before we start anything. So I've plotted a route from Chicago's Midway, which is Kilo Mike Delta Whiskey, and we're headed down to St. Louis, which is Kilo Sierra Tango Lima. And you can see that I've selected a route here. I went to FlightAware and found an actual Southwest flight that um, was in progress and I just borrowed that fight plan and plugged it into not only Sky Vector but also SimBrief and you'll see the load sheet that it produced for me in just a second. So let's take a look at a few other charts that I've taken the liberty of pulling up. So we'll start with our SID here at Midway. Winds are out of the northeast, 5-0, so we're going to be taking off a runway 4 right and holding the runway heading until we make a climbing right turn to 100 degrees and then climb to 2400 feet. At that point we can then turn towards Bacon, which is the first waypoint on our route. If you take a look at the description, you can see um, takeoff from runway, four left or four right. We can expect headings anywhere from 360 through 80. And then the description of the climbing turn and then proceeding on course. Now here's the star into St. Louis. We'll be coming from this direction. Roberts will be our transition. And as we head towards St. Louis, we'll begin turning to the southwest. But because we are landing to the southeast, we'll take this, um, I guess, northwest route before we begin our turn back towards the airport and runway 11. So I'll be wanting to check our FMS and make sure that it plots these points and not something like this. These are all of the waypoints. So I'm going to be also checking to make sure that these get entered in by the computer um, itself. And lastly, on this screen, and we'll come back to it, this is the load sheet that SimBrief prepared, and I've highlighted the salient points that we'll come back to as we get into the actual programming of the FMS. And we might as well start with that now. So here we go. Let's start by selecting the FMS check our nav data, we would get, uh, if it wasn't uh, up to date, we would get an error message down here, but Navigraph has kept me up to date. And because the IRS has not aligned, we have to enter the position. You'll see that in just a second, but we start by clearing that. Then we go over to position init, and we'll put in our, let me turn up the panel lights, I've done this video on two different days and everything uh, may not be the same. So let me uh, put in Midway here. Uh, 
I'm not going to bother with the gate, but let's go over to the next page and get our GPS coordinates, put them in the scratch pad, and then enter them here. If the IRS was aligned, we wouldn't have these little boxes. It would know where it's at. So now we've got activity here on the PFD and the ND. They kind of come to life. All right. So next we click our route and Midway is already down in the scratch pad and we'll enter that for our origin. And then our destination is St. Louis. And we can or cannot put in a runway at this point. If I put it in now, it will show up on the departure screen. Or if I set it on the departure screen, it will show up here. But since I'm here, I might as well just stick it in here. One way or the other, it has to be entered. But first, we're going to go over and do our performance initialization. The only thing that you enter on this side that gets things started would be the zero fuel weight. So if I go over and look at my load sheet, my zero fuel weight is 62, I'm sorry, 56.2. So I enter that here. And a little addition takes place. This and this get added and ends up in our gross weight. Now the center of gravity is a number that you can't change. And um, as much as I have tried to understand it and read about it, uh, I'm really not qualified to mention it other than there's a series of charts and applications that are used by the airline and pilots to figure this number. But in the case of this FMS, you can't change it. It just comes up. So we're going to live with it. You can put in reserves. Now, I selected 5,000 kilograms. That's a little much. So I'm just going to go with two. And that will give me about um, an extra 45 minutes of flying, which is pretty standard for reserves. Our cost index, I'm just going to go with 10. The lower the number, the more economical the flight. In other words, the less aggressive the climb and the slower the cruise speed. So think of this side as fuel. And then this side will be altitude, winds, and temperature. So I'm going to put in our cruise altitude of flight 260. I'm not going to execute it just yet. Now we've got winds and cruise. And that number we get from our top of climb. So we have 265 degrees at 44 knots. And while I'm here, I'm going to note, I'm noticing that my temperature deviation is 11 degrees on the plus side. At 44, and I'll put that there. This wind direction and speed is important in calculating the rate of climb that the aircraft is going to be using. Our standard deviation, temperature deviation, is f going to be 11 degrees in this case. I'll put that there. And this is the difference between the standard lapse rate that you would use of 3.5 degrees per thousand feet and what it actually is. So it's actually going to be 11 degrees warmer than that standard rate. Our transition altitude here in the United States, 
flight level 180. I'll go ahead and execute that before going over to our N1. On this screen, we can adjust our N1 limit. It is also the place where we can derate the engines, which means that we're reducing the amount of thrust the engines produce. And there's three reasons you do that, at least three reasons. One, it reduces the amount of fuel the airplane will need. It also saves on noise, and it saves on wear and tear. Now, it can vary depending on the length of the runway, the altitude, and the temperature. Um, sometimes you're going to need more thrust, like on a shorter runway or on a hot day, uh, as opposed to a cold day and a long runway. But we start by putting in our outside air temperature, which in this case is 21 centigrade. So I'll put that in. Whoops, you have to put a slash in front of that because it's after the slash here. And the D-rate process would be putting a number in here that will lower the thrust or the N1 over here. So I'm just going to put in 30. And it doesn't do really anything at all. So let's try 40 instead. And you can see that the engines are derated now to 96. You can also do that on your climb right now because we're using some short runways here. I'm just going to go with the full 26. Now over to our takeoff screen. We'll put in five degrees of flaps. That can vary, but generally the standard is five. And you can see our thrust reduction here and we click here to get our center of gravity and our trim, 4.65. And then we can select our V speeds. So this is our maximum reject takeoff speed. This is when we rotate. And this is the speed we need to be at if we have an engine out in order to keep climbing. So let's go over and start with our departure which will start filling out the legs screen so runway is 04 right we're going to be using midway 4 there is no transition for this SID and I'll just go ahead and activate that and now whoops we already have takeoff let's go over to our arrival we're going to be using ILS 11. This will be our transition. I'll just call it Suicide. And our star is Arch 2. And our VOR is Romeo Bravi Bravo Sierra. Back to our route. And then to legs. And you can see that we've got a vector here and since I don't have ATC I want to get rid of this and then we have a discontinuity to take care of so I'll click our BOR and place it in there but I do want to add a couple of waypoints between midway and RBS and then possibly one at the end of our flight so go back to all of our charts here. Here's a list of the waypoints from Flight Aware. So I want to put in Bacon and Bloker between Midway and our transition of RBS. Bacon. And I click RBS and it places it in front and I have to execute it and then I'm going to clear the discontinuity. Now I want to put Bloker in as well. I 
All right, and click RBS again, and now it's between the two, and get rid of the discontinuity. And that takes care of the departure. Now what about on the tail end? Let's take a look at our arrival here. Again, we have vectors. I want to get rid of that because I don't have ATC. And I'll just clear our discontinuity. Now, notice we go from Buell to Society. Remember, there was a vector here. So I wonder, why was there a vector? And so we go over and look at our one of our charts. This is Buell. And this is side, which is our IAF, or Initial Approach Fix. So this would make a pretty radical turn here, an oblique angle. And the 737 Zebo doesn't like that. And chances are it would just take off in this direction and never return. So we want to enter it at a little bit smoother of an angle. So I'm thinking about putting in Hardy. But before I do that, where is our... Okay, here's our star. So we're coming down from Roberts. All these waypoints have been entered in the FMS, and then here's Buell. And what I'm suggesting is we go a little bit further out and then come back. So the waypoint here is going to be Hardy. So let's put that in between Buell and Society. So and get rid of the discontinuity. And now I'm curious, what does all this look like? So let's go back to our starting point here, and then we're going to step through this. So flip over your mode switch, your ND mode switch, to uh, plan. And I'm going to make this 20 mile range. And now we have this step indication here. And here is our airplane here at Midway. So we'll just step around to Bacon, RBS, and on down. Then we turn to the southwest. You can see our top of climb. And then we turn towards the northwest. There's Buell right here. And then up to Hardy. And then back to Society to get lined up with our runway. So all of that looks good. Go back up here, flip this over to plan, and change our range. And that pretty much takes care of the programming of the FMS on the Zebo 737. So I appreciate your comments and suggestions and questions. Until next time.